Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report. Pretty standard for this time of year. Very, very slow. <laughs> you know, this is just, we're in the, in the lull. If I were to say that there's one thing that I might be excited about, at least in this area, uh, I live in Oregon City, so in my zone, if I were to get excited and be like, listen, I want to go fishing and try to get me some, something to take home, I'm probably going to go walleye fishing, to be honest with you. Yes, there's still some options to catch some Chinook down there, but to be quite honest with you, until I can get back out to the Columbia, I'm pretty much over it. Uh, but walleye, absolutely. Trout fishing, certainly an option. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get out there and still do to go chase some fish around. As a matter of fact, this past week we were supposed to go over to Hag. I think we're going to do that this week. Um, chase some trout around and uh old crappie killer got me excited about chasing crappie and hag as well so there's some certain op there's certainly some options there but as always the number one thought on pretty much everyone's mind this time of year is what's going to happen this upcoming fall chinook season yesterday we showed you fish counts we didn't show the 10 year so that question popped up so i want to show you that but let's just do the fish counts real quick give you an idea what's actually happening uh this is at bonneville dam Numbers are not necessarily ramping back up, obviously, with 547 that went over yesterday. Year-to-date total uh, for Chinook is 150 grand. Once we get there, we'll get to the 10-year uh, average. Things are pretty normal, but we love this. I mean, to see 45.8, now listen, 10 years ago, which we were doing this exact same update every day, uh, 10 years ago, we would have said, this is horrible. Because technically it is. We've been beaten into submission thinking that, that those are good numbers. We're just starting to see numbers kind of come back for summer, summer steelhead. Uh, hopefully it just, just continues. A lot of people really banging the walls for opening up certain areas for uh, summer steelhead fishing that have been closed the last three or four seasons. Um, probably a good idea just to leave them alone, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but let's just hope that that just continues uh, to, to ramp up. Over at the falls at Oregon City, still not, I mean, certainly concerning. And I'll, you always have to be kind of interested in what they're going to do. But taking a look at the 10 year average going over uh, Bonneville, we're exactly where we want to be, uh, or at least, I shouldn't say that, at least we're right where we should be uh, based on that 10 year average. The red line is this year, blue line's last year, black line's the 10 year average. You can see here in the middle, uh, of August is when things start to bounce and you usually see that spike. Yeah, my birthday's on the 29th. Ah. And that's usually when we're starting to see those biggest, the biggest numbers start uh, over uh, Bonneville. Best part for me, I like to fish the main stem. I don't fish down in Astoria for a hundred different reasons. But from here to the 29th where you see that little bounce, the fish are in the river. They just haven't crossed over Bonneville. So let's just hope that that actually, <laughs> I guess I'm being optimistic. Let's just hope that happens. But to answer the question that we got, we're absolutely where we are always at uh, this time of year, just at the very bottom uh, of the numbers going over Bonneville and things should start to bounce in the next two or three weeks. Let's just, I'm looking forward to it. I know where my plan will be. If it's not this week, it will be the first of the following uh, to get back out there. I might even just do old school running wobblers, but we'll get there. Hey, we might even want to get Ken back on to talk about that triple rig plunking setup too, Ryan. Let's reach out to him. Uh, in the end, river levels, not nothing too exciting there. Uh, tides are certainly uh, the big deal if you're going to be heading out and still trying to chase uh, Chinook around. It's not a waste of time. Just stay as far down in the system as you can, and uh, it's been it's been promising. Not great, uh, but certainly for the end of July, uh, more consistent than some might think. Don't forget, though, you always like to win free stuff. <laughs> Send an email to my buddy over there at Procure, Jason Hambly, uh, Jason at Procure.com, and you'll be entering in to win uh, that weekly uh, prize pack. Now, we don't have Katie this morning, unfortunately, but if you want to see what's going on with our weather and what you can expect this upcoming week, head over to kptv.com, uh, the Fox 12 app, and you can certainly find from the best weather source in the state, both states, quite honestly, uh, what we can expect. And, Looks like we got a little bit of rain maybe in the forecast, uh, and then things are going to warm back up. By next week, we're supposed to be in the low to mid-90s, maybe even warmer. Uh, we'll see how that, uh, there's my, that's my best uh, way of being a meteorologist.
I'm not, I'm not a meteorologist. All right, we're going to cut to a break. When we come back, I'm going to have my good buddy on, Cody Herman. He's the owner-operator of Day One Outdoors. We're going to have our first chance to talk with him about this year's buoy 10 season. He's chasing sturgeon as we speak, uh, and we'll find out what his thoughts are for this upcoming week as our fall Chinook season kicks off, the Super Bowl of Chinook fishing. We'll be back with that in just a couple minutes. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line, because we fish, by Hawk and Fishing, perfection in fishing gear, and by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest.